Hello, and welcome to the Regional Admission Counselors of California College Fair. My name is Becca, and I will be facilitating tonight's event. Thank you so much for joining us. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This presentation is being recorded and will be available on strivescan.com backslash RA. CC. So now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. First up, we have University College Cork. Great. Thank you so much. Just one second while I get this up. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Maggie Cardosi, and I am the North American Officer for University College Cork in Ireland, um, although I'm based in the New York City area. Um, I actually enjoyed studying in Ireland so much, I did it twice. So um, I'm really happy to take a couple of minutes to share um, a little bit about a country that um, I definitely feel is my second home, and I hope that you call home someday as well. Um, so first up, a little bit about Cork City, which is located along the southern coast of Ireland, which if you're not familiar, is a small country on the western periphery of Europe. Um, it's about the size of the state of Indiana, so relatively small with about 5 million people altogether. Cork is the second largest city with about 200,000 people altogether. Um, a recent Lonely Planet article said everything good in Ireland can be found in Cork, and um, I do not disagree with that statement at all. Um, not only is Cork um, got kind of a very friendly small town vibe to it, um, it also has a really nice European cosmopolitan flair. So like I said, just like the rest of Ireland, Cork is safe, friendly and welcoming, but there is no shortage of things to do. Um, for such a small city, um, it, we are actually over indexed when it comes to arts and culture. So there are dozens of museums, galleries, um, concert venues, theaters, um, restaurants, bars um, and, and festivals every um, all, all over the town um, to keep you busy and to keep you entertained. Um, and there's no shortage of things to do in um, County Cork as well. Um, County Cork is home to some of Ireland's most beautiful um, landscapes, coastline, um, beaches, um, and heritage sites. Um, so um, really Lots, lots to keep you busy. I mean, it's very easy to get around Ireland as well um, via public transportation, either bus or train. Um, and then it's also easy to get to points around Europe too um, via the Cork um, International Airport, which is about five um, or four miles from our campus. Um, and speaking of our campus, there we are just there. Um, we have a beautiful um, campus that dates from 1845, um, lots of green and everything that you need to be successful um, right there at your fingertips and just a quick 15 minute walk from um, all those great things I was talking about that are in um, the heart of the city center. Um, we are ranked in the top 2% of universities worldwide, um, which means that any one of our 130 uh, internationally recognized undergraduate degree programs are going to mean something wherever you choose to go after graduation. Um, we have, we're number one for the student experience in Ireland with over 200 different student activities and supports um, there to make sure that you are looked after um, both in mind and body and you're making friends um, and really getting involved with um, our, our vibrant community life on campus. Um, we have over 22,000 students that join us every year from all over the world um, from about 104 different countries. So you're not just going to be studying and living with Irish students, but you're going to have like a true international experience, um, you know, living and studying with students from, from all over. Um, and we're also very proud to be the world's first green campus and we are currently eighth in the world for sustainability so if you are somebody that is passionate about the environment of sustainability and you will find a like-minded and supportive community at University College Cork. Our undergraduate programs are three or four year direct entry honors programs, meaning that we don't have general education requirements and you do need to have a, a pretty good idea of what you'd like to study at the point of application. Um, as I mentioned, we have over 130 different undergraduate programs across our four colleges and pretty much everything that you would find at a large research institution um, here in the United States, uh, whether that's sciences, business, engineering, food science, um, arts and 
humanities, social science, um, even law and medicine um, or dentistry at the undergraduate level. Um, some of our more popular programs or unique programs would be our joint honors arts um, program anthropology, criminology, forensic, forensic chemistry, psychology and computing, applied international geosciences and public health sciences. And what makes us really unique, and I'd say the cornerstone of our curriculum at UCC is that um, practical learning is a huge part of what you're going to be doing. So most of our programs will include either work placements, field work, internship courses, or study abroad opportunities. And this practical learning um, coupled with our relationships, really strong relationships with businesses both um, local and um, international businesses located in the Cork area make our graduates very highly sought after. Um, and about 94% of our students go on to be employed or in further study within six months of graduation. Um, and so, and when it comes to kind of money matters, um, it's worth noting that the average cost of attendance at University College Cork is around $33,000 per year. So that's taking into account both your tuition and your living expenses, which um, if you are looking at out of state or private school options, um, really competitive cost. Um, we also have partial tuition um, merit based scholarships available, depending on the faculty that you're applying to, and you can also work part time um, while you're a student with us. When it comes to the application process, um, pretty straightforward. We do a direct application that's online uh, with rolling admission from about December 10th every year. And we will be looking primarily at your GPA and test scores, although we do look for some other materials. Um, and it's worth noting that um, some more competitive programs like engineering and medicine are gonna have higher requirements. Um, I also wanna say that we haven't made our decision as to whether we're going to be test flexible for fall 2022. So watch this space. And if you have any questions, please do get in touch. Um, there is my contact info just there, um, but I will leave it at that and say, um, go Ramila Magat and thanks for listening. Thank you. Up next, we have University College Dublin. Thank you, Becca. All right. Okay, Mila Falcha, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Chelsea Weaver. I am with University College Dublin, or UCD for short. I am based in San Diego and am the regional representative for the Western region. I will start with a few highlights of Dublin and Ireland. As Maggie said, Ireland is an incredibly friendly, welcoming and safe country. In fact, Ireland is the 10th safest country in the world according to the Global Peace Index. Dublin is a very vibrant city. About 50% of the population is under the age of 34. So it's truly a great city for college students. It's also a very accessible city in many ways. There's no visa requirement as a full-time undergraduate student from the US. It's an English speaking country. And as Maggie said, it's very easy to travel around the country via bus or train and is well connected to mainland Europe. Dublin is a modern capital city and we are home to almost 1200 multinational companies like Facebook, Google, Airbnb, TikTok, uh, and is a great headquarters for internships and work experience after graduation. If you complete your undergraduate degree in Ireland, you can stay in Ireland to seek employment uh, to gain work experience for up to one year after you graduate. Okay, so UCD is ranked within the top 1% of universities worldwide. We're also ranked the number one university in Ireland by US News and World Report for the second year in a row. We have approximately 19,000 undergraduate students and nearly 30% of our student body is international. We have the largest campus in Ireland. We have over 300 acres and we are located three miles south of the Dublin city center in the beautiful green suburbs. We're also ranked number one in Ireland for graduate employability for the last three years, which is a ranking that also takes employer satisfaction into account. Our campus is very similar to a traditional US college campus with all of the amenities that you're used to seeing. 
uh, such as a swimming pool, sauna, gym, climbing wall, and various student and academic support services that you would hope to find as well. We have multiple libraries throughout campus dedicated to different academic disciplines, and we have over 130 societies and sports clubs, including a few of my favorite societies, of course, the International Student Society, the Harry Potter Society, and the Food Society. We do have over 3,000 students living on campus, and we seek to guarantee housing for incoming undergraduate international students. All students will stay in a private bedroom with shared living spaces, apartment style, so you will not have to share a dorm room. And on campus, we have food stores, laundry facilities, a pharmacy, and a health center. As Maggie mentioned, in Ireland, we refer to majors as courses or programs, and it is common to apply directly to the course of your chosen subject, which is known as direct entry. We do not have general education requirements. So if you wanna study English and you never wanna take a math class again, for example, you do not have to. We offer over 70 undergraduate degree courses, which are three or four years in length, depending on the course. We also have our liberal arts and sciences program, which is our most popular program for US students as it is most similar to an undecided major in the US and allows you to explore various subjects for your first year or two before you choose a major. We are on the Common App, or you can, of course, apply directly on our website. For admission to UCD, we only review academics. We do not review essays, letter of re letters of recommendation, or extracurricular activities. Entry requirements for all of our programs are on our website. And the same as Maggie with UCC, we are currently test flexible for some of our programs for 2021 entry. We're not sure just yet what 2022 and beyond is going to look like, um, but our more competitive programs do still require the SAT and ACT currently. 80% of our international students receive a scholarship ranging from 10 to 100% of tuition and all of our scholarships are academic merit based. For a point of comparison, UCD is typically more expensive than staying in state for school, but usually less expensive than going out of state or to a private school in the US. And we do accept US federal aid and US veterans benefits as well. We certainly encourage you to check out our 3D virtual tour on our website and hope that you will be able to visit our campus in person in the near future when it is safe to do so. As a reminder, my name is Chelsea and I am your regional admissions representative. Definitely reach out with any questions and thank you so much. Thank you, Chelsea. Up next, we have University, University of Edinburgh. Hi there, everybody. My name is Hilary Sementina and I am the regional representative for the University of Edinburgh and I am based in California. So Edinburgh is the capital city of Scotland. Um, the population of the city is about 500,000. So even though it's a capital, it's relatively small. And 15% of the city population is made up of students. There's actually four universities in Edinburgh, but the University of Edinburgh is the largest. So it's a very student-friendly city. As a capital, it has everything you would expect, museums, theaters, cinema, nightlife, et cetera. But it's very compact and walkable. You do not need a car to get around. Most students will walk or ride a bike or take a bus. So it really is a great place to be an international student. The university itself is one of Scotland's ancient universities founded in 1583, and we're currently ranked 20th in the world. We are a research-led institution, so over 80% of our academic staff are actively involved in research, and that's across multiple, multiple fields and disciplines. And as an old prestigious university, as you'd expect, we're associated with Nobel Prize and a Pulitzer Prize winner. So we are Scotland's largest university with over 45,000 students, and about 20,000 of those are undergraduates. 
41% of our student population is international, meaning they come from countries outside of the United Kingdom. And we are very proud of the fact that we are the number one destination in the UK for US and Canadian students who come to the UK and study. So our university celebrates and supports our diverse student and staff community. Uh, again, our staff are actually a third come from outside of the UK as well. So I'm sure as you're walking around the city, you'll most likely hear a familiar accent or two and come across people from countries that you may not normally have ever encountered um, someone if you were to perhaps stay at home. So academically, our university is divided into three colleges, but that's not to say we're a collegiate system like Oxford or Cambridge. We have the College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, which is the largest of the three. This is where you'll find subjects such as business, architecture, English literature, history, philosophy, law, etc. Then we have the College of Science and Engineering, where you can find our informatics or computer science programs. Um, engineering, mathematics, physics, biological sciences. And then the smallest is our medicine and veterinary medicine college where our medical and vet students study. So as a large university, you would expect us to have a lot of degree programs. We have 390 degrees that you can choose from at undergraduate level. So hopefully we offer something that you're interested in studying. And our academic year is divided into two semesters. We have semester one, which runs from September until December. Then the university closes for a two week winter break and semester two runs from January until May. So undergraduate degrees in Scotland are typically four years in length. And as you'll hear later when my colleague from Falmouth um, presents, this is slightly different from the rest of the UK. In England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, most undergraduate degrees are three years in length. So due to our four-year degree structure, it means students have flexibility and choice in the subjects that they study in their first two years. So in your first and second year, you will take classes that are compulsory for your major, but then you'll get to take electives and outside subjects that you're interested in doing. Then in your third year, that's when you really specialize and focus on your major so you don't take electives anymore. And many of our programs have the option for you to study abroad as well. We have exchange destinations all across the world and you could even return back to the United States if you wanted to do your year abroad back home. And then in your fourth year, your studies culminate in a dissertation or research project that is supervised by a personal tutor who's an academic member of staff. So we really encourage students to do independent self-guided thinking and create their own study groups with their peers, go to the library, do their own research, et cetera. Importantly, undergraduate degrees and all of our degrees at Edinburgh are internationally recognized. So you don't have to worry about coming to the UK and doing your undergraduate degree and it not being recognized when you return to the US. It definitely will be recognized. So obviously your studies and academics are important, but so is, side, so is life outside the classroom. Um, we have a great welcome week in September, the week before classes begin, where we run orientation and welcome activities for new students. And I strongly recommend the best way to get involved with our student and campus community is to join one of our groups or societies. We have over 290 and we also have 64 sports clubs and you can play sports at an elite level competing on the university teams against other British and European institutions, or you can play very casually on intramural teams. We have a lot of university housing for students. We have over 9,000 residential places for students to live. And the great thing about an being an international student at Edinburgh is that you are guaranteed university housing in your first year as long as you apply by the deadline. We also have health and well being and support services that you'll have access to on campus. So just quickly, now that you've decided that's great and you want to apply, you submit an application through the Universities and College Admission Service or UCAS, which is like the UK version of the Common App. And for US students, we were test flexible for this year and it hasn't been confirmed yet if this will continue to next year, but hopefully it will just watch this space. And then finally, please take our virtual visit to get a better idea of the campus and university and the city. And you can chat online to our current students if you want to get the student perspective straight from them. So thank you very much and I'll pass it off to the next person. 
Thank you. Up next, we have the University of Melbourne. Okay, uh, good day, everyone. This is Todd St. Brain from the University of Melbourne. So we're gonna take a brief pause uh, from Europe and head uh, down under where um, it's only a 13 hour flight uh, from the West Coast, but your future literally is in Australia because it's already tomorrow, 11 a.m. in Melbourne. So welcome to UniMelb, or as we say in the local Aboriginal language, Woman Jaika. Melbourne is a top rank public uh, research intensive university located in the southern part of the Australia. As you can see, we're a very comprehensive university and we have a wide range of disciplines that excel at the global uh, level. What does this actually mean? Well, this is the Great Barrier Reef, which is about a four hour flight north of Melbourne. Imagine taking classes even in your first year with Madeline Van Oppen, who is bioengineering heat resistant uh, coral to save the Great Barrier Reef. This is the type of academic experience that you can have at the University of Melbourne. Consider us an Australian version of Stanford, UCLA, UCL Berkeley, uh, which are some of our California partner institutions. This is our main campus uh, here in the heart of Melbourne, only about 15 minutes uh, from downtown in between the biomedical precinct and our version of Little Italy. So what I love about Australia, it's a multicultural country. Our university is very international with nearly half International students were very large with over 25,000 undergraduate students. And you have an American community of several hundred students um, if you wanna be connected with your fellow US expats. So Melbourne has great um, a job um, professional outcomes because we embed internships and lots of career services. Uh, and all international students have the option to stay in Australia and work for two years after graduation, giving you options as to where you can start your career. Now, our degrees in Australia are just three years. That's a savings in it itself. So, but at the current exchange rate, our annual tuition is going to be about 33,000 US dollars, which makes us competitive with many private and out-of-state um, top-ranked institutions in the US. We'd estimate another 15 to 20,000 US for uh, living costs. And you, you can use um, financial aid um, student loans at the University of Melbourne. And you're doing all of this in the great city of Melbourne, about 4 million people. It's regarded as Australia's sports, cultural, technology capital with easy access to nature. So we have streamlined our degrees into eight options with 150 majors, minors, and this might be in the Bachelor of Agriculture. We call um, arts is liberal arts, uh, put in bold some of the more popular majors here, entire degree in biomedicine, we call business commerce, there's design, there's fine arts, there's music, and a plethora in the sciences, including the life sciences, um, IT, and engineering. So you, um, we have to learn to speak Australian English and we call degrees courses. So if you head to our find a course page, this is where you can search to see, you know, your interest might be in more than one major or possibly more than one degree. So we're the only Australian version, Australian university has anything that's similar to Gen Ed. Um, we call these breath subjects. It's 25% of your degree, but you can basically do anything of your choosing outside of your uh, degree. Um, this also means flexibility, time to decide a major. We also have options, which we call concurrent um, diplomas or honors, if you want to do uh, a year of research um, for the extended four years. Entry requirements from high school is going to be based on an SAT or ACT um, and GPA and AP exams, and it's guaranteed entry if you can meet these thresholds. We're not test optional, but we do have alternatives to the SAT or the ACT which is an Australian uh, standardized test or an aggregate of your AP exams. If you don't have AP exams, you'd have to submit um, a university level subject for review. We also have a guaranteed entry based on the IB. And if there's any transfer students out there, it's really straightforward. It's primarily a, a 3.0 GPA. So it's different down under, everything's opposite. Our seasons and so are semesters. Semester one starts in March, semester two starts in late July. 
your summer vacation is like November, December, January, February, you can actually start in either semester um, because we have the core classes in each semester. And anyone looking to start this year means online because the border does remain closed. We offer rolling admissions. Our application deadlines are very different. Um, you basically would have the end, the end of your senior year. My advice is just to apply when you're applying to US universities. We do offer rolling admissions. And you always have the option to defer for a semester or two. We can guarantee uh, accommodation. Just to confuse you, we call the dorms colleges. There's also student apartments. You always get your own room. Of course, you're gonna have lots of clubs and sports to make uni life something exciting and dynamic. We'll finish with a brief campus tour, again, located in the heart of Melbourne with large um, um, open spaces, standstone buildings, um, modern structures. Um, of course, we have to stop off at the car park because we do things like film Mad Max movies in there. And of course, vibrant Melbourne with great cafes, music, sports, and easy access to nature. So I'm based in San Francisco. Uh, please get in touch um, to talk more about University of Melbourne. Uh, thanks so much. And let's head back to Europe. Thank you. Up next, we have Falmouth University. Great, thanks, Becca. Hi everyone, my name is Jackie Christopher and I'm the development manager for Falmouth University and I am based on the East Coast. And just tell you a little bit about Falmouth, we are based in Southwest England um, and we are focused in the creative arts, but we are more focused on the creative industries and we want students when they come to Falmouth that they have that firsthand experience of getting professional um, equipment, professional experiences um, as soon as they start year one. So you get that access and that confidence and skills um, you know, in your industry prior to graduating. Uh, we were established in 1902 as the School of Art, but we gained university status in 2012. We're a small, medium-sized university with approximately 5,000 students, which um, is interesting because we are the second largest creative arts university um, in the UK. And um, because we're a small, medium-sized university, you get that personalized attention. So um, the average classroom size is roughly 15 students per class. And we have two campuses um, that are roughly 15, 20 minutes apart by bus. All students can access facilities on both campuses for cross-departmental projects. And we're number one in the UK for graduates starting or running their own business. Um, and we're the second safest university in England and Wales. So like I was saying, we are located in Southwest England, but we are in the county of Cornwall, England. And if you don't know about Cornwall, um, it's a very touristic county, um, very picturesque, British, uh, quintessential harbor town, harbor villages. Um, you're able to do surfing, sailing, camping, hiking, and more. So if you're kind of an active student, bohemian student, then this is a great option. Um, and it's a very vibrant student life, very creative student life. Um, so there's, like I said, a lot of different activities and that's why it's so vibrant. Um, closest airport is Newquay, which is 40 minutes away from Falmouth. Uh, we're approximately five hours away from London by train. And all the first year students have access to the airport collection service and we will pick you up from um, London Heathrow Airport. And just tell you about, about Cornwall and Falmouth, the, the town in general. So um, Cornwall is one of the cheapest counties to live in the UK. Transport and entertainment are affordable. Part-time jobs are easy to find and abundant. And when you're on a student visa in the UK, you can work up to 20 hours a week during term time. During non-term time, you can work up to 40 hours a week. Um, and yeah, since it's touristy, there's plenty of options available to find work in town. If not, you can definitely work um, on campus doing many different um, jobs like being a student ambassador or working at a cafe and such. So we have nine diverse departments at Falmouth. So as you can, you can see on the right hand side, if you like to learn more about our degrees, you can scan the QR code, but just some um, programs that our American students are interested in. 
um, that are more appealing are the, is the film um, program, the Games Academy, we're six um, outside of the US. Um, we have one of the largest Games Academies um, in Europe. Uh, we also offer a program called Marine and Natural History Photography, which is very rare to find. So we have some really cool niche programs that may be of um, an attraction to you. So definitely check us out further. And um, as uh, Hillary was saying, Scottish degrees are four years long, but English degrees are three years long. You're not doing those prerequisites. You're going directly into the subject. Um, to the to the degree, um, subject that you are looking to study. Um, so if you're doing creative writing, you will never have to do a math or science course. But with Falmouth, we have not only three-year bachelor's degrees, but we also have two-year bachelor's degrees. Um, you just do not, um, you, you don't have those breaks in the winter and the summer. So you just continually do your studies, you finish in two years, you're saving more time and money. Um, but if you want to develop your skills, we do have those four-year degrees that has an integrated foundation year. And the facilities at Falmouth are industry standard and very accessible. Students can borrow equipment for free in departmental stores. We have two libraries with IT suites, including a 24-hour library on Penryn campus. And we have an on-campus art shop. Students can order heavy materials to the campus as well. And because this is a creative arts university, we have a very vibrant creative community at Falmouth and, you know, having establishing those connections, um, you know, and we have such a diverse range of students, you know, having those per, um, connections can really help you um, professionally later down the road, but they do collaborate together with many different projects and, and, um, and new uh, opportunities. And one cool thing about Falmouth we have is this workshop festival. So workshop festivals happen twice annually and they um, it's a, a week's worth of um, many different classes that students can get involved in, which is really exciting. And just to tell you a little bit about our entry requirements, we do not require SAT, ACT, or APs. Um, the heavy bulk of your application is the portfolio. And um, I know I'm running out of time. You can apply through UCAS or through our free online application. And if you have any questions about our um, degrees, please uh, reach me or you can reach us on our website at falmouth.ac.uk. Thanks so much. Thank you. And last but not least, we have American University of Paris. Bonjour, my name is Jen Boucher and I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions for the American University of Paris. AUP is a private urban liberal arts university located in the heart of Paris, France. We are in the same neighborhood, the 7th arrondissement as the Eiffel Tower, and we are an American university just located in Paris. Our student body consists of over 1,000 students from 100 countries. So no matter what class you're in, you're going to have very diverse perspectives, not only based on students' research, but also based on their background, their beliefs, their upbringing, what makes them who they are today. 16 is the average class size. Nine to one is a student to faculty ratio. And all of the classes are taught in English. Just like our students, our faculty come from all over the world, about 30 countries, and 70% speak three or more languages. We have 26 majors and 39 minors in the fields of business, politics, communications, arts, and humanities, with an international emphasis. We're also big on experiential learning and interdisciplinary education, so you'll find a lot of crossover between the majors, and many classes also take you out into the city or even other countries to explore. As you know, we are located in the same neighborhood as the Eiffel Tower, 
These buildings you see circled are the campus buildings, and we are truly woven right into the city, surrounded by museums, businesses, cafes, and restaurants, plus apartments. It's about a 15 minute walk if you were to walk across the furthest points of campus, but in that middle clustered section, that's where most of the classes take place, roughly five or 10 minutes walking distance between class. We have tons of clubs and events, plus volunteering or opportunities to work in Paris. So lots of different things to do all over the city and campus. But one of my favorite events I wanted to highlight is called the World's Fair. This is very similar to a college fair, but every table represents a different country with food from their homeland. So bon appetit. One of my other favorite things about AUP are the study trips. These are where students take a class in Paris, but then they travel all over the world with their professor and classmates to experience what they're learning in the classroom in person. Shakespeare in London, psychology in Cairo, film in the Netherlands, and politics in Israel are a few of our more recent trips. We also offer cultural excursions, which are fun trips, mainly throughout France, ranging from a theater performance or perfume making class in Paris to visiting cities or regions like Normandy and Nice for the weekend. Our housing is a bit unique compared to most universities. The housing office will find and furnish various residences each semester. And so some might be more of an apartment style, Others are more of a dorm style. Um, they also vary in distance from campus and pricing, um, but essentially um, they all come with bathrooms and uh, private bathrooms, I should say, and kitchens. And um, students um, will actually make their own meals in their residence instead of having a meal plan. So to apply to AUP, you would submit the common application or apply to AUP directly. These are all of the application requirements. Regarding transcripts, the average GPA is 3.3 unweighted, but there's not a required GPA to apply to AUP. We are also test optional, always have been even before COVID-19, but the average SAT is 1265, average ACT is 30. We receive most applications for fall entry, but we also accept students for spring. Over here, you'll see the fall deadlines. So all in all, we have rolling admissions. So starting November 15th, we'll begin to read applications for the following fall, and you should hear a response within about three to four weeks of when you apply. This is the cost of attendance for the 2021 through 2022 school year, about 50,000 euros per year for the entire cost, tuition, housing, food, transportation, everything. And of course, we offer scholarships. When you apply to AUP, you're considered for the Global Citizen Scholarship automatically. That's our merit award. If you'd like to be considered for more scholarships, you would submit FAFSA and the AUP aid application to be considered for the tuition and scholar awards. And lastly, we have awards for IB Diploma students who score a 32 or higher on the IB Diploma exam, but you would receive the IB Diploma Scholarship or a combination of the other three. We have 20,000 alumni in 145 countries all over the world. So if you're looking for a global career, this could be an amazing starting point for you. 94% of our students have a job or are in grad school within one year of graduation. 80% report an international element to their career and 50% report that a professor personally helped them on their career path. Once more, I am Jen Boucher with the American University of Paris, and I am based in California as well, so easy to contact you. Um, there's my email address plus a QR code if you'd like more information, and I look forward to working with you. Merci. Thank you, Jen. All right, we've got one more uh, piece of the event tonight. So if everyone would like to come back on screen, we're just going to do a very quick Q and a in the order in which you presented, um, feel free to share a fun or interesting fact about your school. So we'll start with university college Cork. 
All right. Um, my favorite fun fact, or one of them, um, is around uh, Professor George Boole, um, who was our first professor of mathematics. If you don't know who George Boole was, um, he created Boolean algebra or Boolean logic, which laid the foundation for the digital age. Um, so if you are tuning in on a laptop or a mobile device or really tuning in at all, um, it is thanks to um, George Boole and I guess UCC. So you're welcome. <laughs> Very cool. University College Dublin. I love that. Uh, as Ireland's global university, we have students from 144 countries and alumni across 169 countries currently. Uh, we have a global lounge on campus, which is a beautiful hangout spot and where we host various cultural events and activities. Very cool. University of Edinburgh. Um, a really random thing about the University of Edinburgh is that um, when you graduate and walk across the stage, the principal, he shakes your hand and he also taps you on the head with a piece of fabric that's from John Knox's trousers. And John Knox was a prominent figure in the Scottish Enlightenment in the 1500s. And apparently this piece of trouser has also been up into space. Wow, it's got to be good luck, right? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> University of Melbourne. Okay, so Nicole Kidman and Kate Clanchett both did some acting studies at Uni Melb, and Julia Gillard, who is not a household name, she studied um, humanities and law and went on to become Australia's first prime minister. So you never know the potential of who you might become or who your future classmates at Unimel will become. So come on down under and check us out. I love that. Falmouth University. How do I beat that? <laughs> um, anyways, um, <laughs> so with Falmouth, um, it's not about the, I would say about the school per se, but it's more about the location. So when modern art um, was first adapted, um, there was a few locations where it started was New York City, London, Paris, and St. Ives. And St. Ives is very close to Falmouth. It's in Cornwall. So that's one of the hubs of, of modern art. And, um, you know, Falmouth is, you know, based off of art and design and so forth. So, um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's a really just interesting fact about mm -hmm. the location. Super interesting. And American University of Paris. Yeah, I'll keep it short and sweet. Our unofficial mascot is the peacock. So a lot of our media productions are named after peacocks. Love that. All right. Well, that about does it, friends. Um, let's see. Just want to thank you all so much for joining this presentation. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Um, your recording of this session will be available on strivescan.com backslash RACC within about a week. So thank you so much. A special thanks to our presenters and have a wonderful rest of your evening. Take care.